Everyone, welcome to Happy. This is the Che tree, that's the Che fruit, and this is a virtually unknown tree, fruiting tree, known to hardcore gardeners, but it's worth everyone knowing about. There are four topics that we're gonna discuss about this tree, and it's conflicting information I see online, and we're gonna sort through that. We're also gonna look at the four different varieties of Che trees that we grow here at Happy. We're gonna taste the fruit. I'm gonna give you some feedback. This video is gonna have some length to it, so check the chapter description. This tree is worth knowing. It's pest-free, disease-free, drought-tolerant, largely unknown, such a fantastic tree. Welcome to Happy. We're gonna take it up a notch. He has slightly different I'm curious to know if I, let me get right down here. You can see that ladybug larvae. Bam! Pull the thing down like a monkey. The tree originates from China. In China, they use it for silkworm food along with mulberry, I believe. It was introduced to the Che tree, was introduced into America just over 100 years ago, and it never gained any traction. We'll see one of the four varieties that we talk about it originates from a project in Tennessee. Why is an 80 year old tree, Che tree growing out on this Tennessee Valley project and yet it never expanded through nurseries? I don't know. It seems like very few nurseries really worked on this tree and worked to perfect the tree. That's why I have a very narrow number of recommendations. Drought tolerant, disease free, pest free, and tasty fruit. And if you get the variety I advocate for, you're gonna have a very polite tree. Very easy to access. Doesn't grow all berserk. No suckering, no thorns, sweet fruit, and seedless fruit. Online, I read a lot of information about seedless versus seedless fruit or fruit with seeds that has to do with whether or not there's a male che tree around i argue that you really don't need or want a male che tree around you want a seedless female or a female che the language is basically seedless self-fertile that's what you want to hone in on so you get this fruit with no seeds. Because the male versus female and all of that gets a little complicated, I advocate for one particular variety of a che tree. Is a che tree thorny or not thorny? Well, again, it depends on the variety that you purchase. If you get a seedless female, self-fertile female, the worst case scenario, you're gonna have thorns relatively. I don't remember there being thorns on this girl right here. This is a seedless Che from Edible Landscaping and on the other Che trees, except for one, I don't have thorns. So worst case scenario, you may get thorns when she's young and only when she's young. Right now, there are absolutely no thorns anywhere in this tree. So you can grow a che tree that's thornless. Why there's information online that some are thorny? Well, that, that is because of the variety that was purchased. You want the characteristics that I outline in my four topics about this che tree. Check out our webpage. Our girl and three out of four are entirely thornless. We'll talk about those four later on in the video. Does a che tree sucker or not? Conflicting information online. This is the che tree. This is the trunk of a che tree. And this is the rootstock Osage Orange. Osage Orange does not sucker. And a reputable nursery is grafting a che scion, a piece of wood, no thicker than my finger right there onto the orange osage, osage orange rootstock, and that's 
would be your graft joint and that makes clear that this nurseryman put this shade tree onto this rootstock and I will not have suckering. You want a nursery to graft che onto a sage orange. The fourth topic is the most annoying topic to me and is does this fruit taste good? Online you'll read everything from has no taste, doesn't taste good, doesn't taste good when it's unripe, duh, uh, blah blah blah. This is a fantastic tasting fruit. Kind of a watermelony cantaloupe mix, juicy, seedless, because we got the right variety. I just couldn't believe that people were saying this didn't taste good. Is that possible? It is possible if you get a different, weird, funky variety, I guess, because I don't know what varieties these online sources are talking about. Do you see the different colors of this fruit? You see some that are red and a lighter kind of a pale color. Well, these aren't even red enough yet to pick. A ripe chafe fruit will give a little bit when you give it a gentle squeeze. These are still firm. They'll get redder. You give it a gentle squeeze and it'll be soft. And that's what you pick. Let's check out this one. So I'm giving it a squeeze and there's no give on this. Now let's get the sucker off. I'm filming straight through. I forgot to turn on the camera. I already took a bite. This is not entirely ripe and I already get the watermelon cantaloupe flavor from it. Give that fruit a little bit of a squeeze and when it's soft, it's good to go. Where's the camera? So the fruit doesn't transport really well because you wanna pick it when it's ripe. It's a lot like a, a fig or a blueberry. Picking a ripe blueberry or fig is labor intensive and you gotta pack the heck out of it so it makes it to the store in great shape. But unlike the fig and the blueberry, no one knows about the chase, so you're just not gonna find it in the store. I'm gonna insert this real quick because I want there to be transparency and I don't want us to look like BSers. The Che tree takes several years before she starts fruiting and then it'll go through about a year or two of dropping that fruit. Once she gets over that hill of first fruiting, then having and then having the fruit hang to the tree then it's you're over you're just going to have tons and tons of fruit year after year just like they have on a very mature tree at edible landscaping so don't plant a che tree and then think you're going to get tons of fruit the following year it may take a few years this is an investment like all good gardening all uh, plantings of fruit trees it's an investment into the future the payoff is worth it this is a fantastic tree and a fantastic fruit this girl here is a seedless che from edible landscaping i think it's largely known as edible landscaping seedless che don't know the history of how edible landscaping got a hold of this particular variety but this is a variety I can fully advocate for. The proof is in their 20 plus year old tree that grows on the edible landscaping nursery's property. It is absolutely adorned with tons of fruit, really sweet fruit and it just blew me away when I first tasted this fruit from edible landscaping. Thornless, seedless, no suckering, super easy to grow, has a tendency as the che tree does to grow a little sideways rather than uphill. Now, there are exceptions like these two branches that I didn't trim. You can see these two decided to take off into the sky. These are branches that you'd wanna cut off. You'd also wanna do some pruning down low to get this stuff off the ground. We got this going on here, which is gonna be kept until the fruiting is completed. 
and then we'll do a little pruning. But we got a lot of fruit that's going to be ripe within a couple of weeks for sure. Need to keep an eye on her. This tree is at least five years old, maybe six, seven years, and it's just been a blast to grow. By the way, I purchased this tree as a little stick. It was the very last one at Edible Landscaping, and I bought it just to have this variety here at Happy. So remember, this started from a very, very small tree. It took a number of years to get here, but here she is and loaded with fruit. This girl's still in a pot. It's the Norris Che tree or the TVA Norris Che tree. It was discovered by nurseryman Cliff England. The parent tree is an 80 year old tree that is still surviving out at a TVA uh, project, a dam project in Tennessee. TVA is Tennessee Valley Authority and they had the Norris Dam project. Nurseryman Cliff England found the parent tree, 80 year old parent tree, loaded with fruit. Sure, he saw qualities that he saw were high potential. And this is the evidence, by the way, the Norris or TVA Norris is evidence of how little cultivation there has been of the Che tree over the last 120 years. I know of two nurseries that cultivated the che tree. I'm not saying it's the only two, it's the two nurseries I know of. England's Orchard, the name will be down below, and Edible Landscaping. It's evidence of how a wonderful fruiting tree can be in America for 120 years and for what it's worth, I know of only two nurseries that work this plant. The Norris Che tree is described as self-fruiting. So what's that tell us in the world of the Che tree? It's a female and it doesn't need a male. We get fruit that is seedless, likely thornless. And someone like Cliff is gonna graft this girl on Osage orange so we won't have the suckering. Okay, seedless female, and uh, fruit about the size of a nickel, good producer, Norris TVA. I haven't seen her fruit, but she's still in a pot, sadly. Another thing I can tell you is that this tree grows a very nice canopy. Again, still in a pot, but it's not that wild, crazy growth like with the one J tree, I say avoid. This girl, nice canopy. Very polite, I like polite trees, trees that don't go wild and crazy and you can work them very easily. Norris or TVA Norris Che tree, thumbs up. This is the California Dreaming. It comes from Cliff England. I don't know the history or the source of this variety, but I can tell you that it grows very nice and politely, no thorns. England's nursery described it as a little more upright growth habit, large fruit or good sized fruit. Now relative to Che, we're not looking at a persimmon. We're looking at a Che fruit, uh, good producer. I also see this statement that it's uh, self fertile. So that tells me she's female. Now we planted this girl in spring and like all Che trees, when they're young, they will uh, display of a small amount of fruit and then fruit will start dropping. It takes a couple of years before they start fruiting and holding the fruit. But I saw one fruit up here. Oh, well. I don't know if you can see it. It's red, but hard as a rock. So that tells me that it'll have no flavor. Color starts telling you what direction the fruit is going like towards ripeness, but it's gotta be remotely soft, ideally soft, not mushy, just soft to the squeeze. Thornless on Osage orange, 
I'm gonna be patient because I invested in this shade tree, so I'll be patient to see the fruit in a few years from now, hopefully next year for sure, but it's okay if it's not next year because happy and your gardening and my gardening and fruit trees, the growth of fruit trees is an investment into time. This is a variety that I can't pronounce and the name is down below, but this is a variety that I say avoid. Very simple, avoid this variety. She just does, if it is a she, I'm gonna pay more attention to see if it's a male next year. It just grows ridiculously long. No fruit, so that's why I suspect it's a male. And when I say no fruit, it's actually just a very few fruit, which is indicative of a male. The thorns seem to be a little better this year, but historically, this has just absolutely evil thorns if you could see the thorn in the middle so because she grows or he grows so long there is a ridiculous amount of pruning on her and with those ridiculously long thorns you're kind of screwed this is a variety i say avoid well i hope you learned something about the che tree I'm always learning more about it. I wrote a really cool, lengthy web page and did a deep dive on that tree. I'm advocating that growers who have room for a relatively modest sized fruit tree consider the che tree because of its overwhelming qualities, particularly drought tolerance, disease pest free, and a tasty fruit and a tree that doesn't grow all crazy big. I hope I shed light on some of the disconnects in the information that you're gonna read online. I advocate for the varieties I advocate for based on what we're doing here on the ground. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone else if you can. Love you. Bye.